So here we have the latest action cameras from the biggest companies, Insta360, GoPro and DJI. And in today's video, we're taking a look at the new Insta360 Go 3 versus the Action 3 and the GoPro Hero 10 or 11. And which of these cameras I think is the best bang for your buck. Oh well, let's include the Insta360 X3 as well. Even though this is a 360 camera, it can shoot in single lens mode at 4K up to 30 FPS, which gives the same look as the other regular action cameras. And since this is the camera I've been using the most for the past four months, I think it's reasonable to add this to the comparison. Now, like the previous comparison I made with these cameras, the first one up is the Action 3. This is the latest action camera from DJI, which can record for days or until the battery dies or the SD card fills up. It's been a reliable source over the past months and it has basically never caused me any issues. The second one up is the GoPro, which overall offers the highest and in my opinion the best resolution. It also provides a good stabilization just like the Action 3 and the Hero 11 also has 10-bit colors which you can also find in the Action 3. Three. The third one up is the brand new Insta360 GO 3, which offers more versatility compared to the other two. And in addition to the GO 3 itself, the new charging case, which has been renamed the Action Pod, has a 2.2 inch touchscreen, which can be flipped for the convenience. So we still get the small action camera we're used to with the GO 2, but now we'll also be able to change the settings and get a live preview of what we're shooting. The last one up is the Insta360 X3, the all in one camera which gives gives you endless options and the camera that records everything. And if you didn't know, you can also use this as a regular action camera, just like the Action 3, GoPro and the Go 3. And if I should add my personal opinion and experience using the X3, this is probably the camera with the best overall stabilization. Now, all of these cameras have been on the market for some time now, so you might know the specs of these already. But if you don't, I will leave a link down to each of the cameras down in the description if you want to learn more. So this video is mainly going to be about the convenience of the four cameras and how I've been using them. And despite the Go 3 being brand new, Insta360 also sent me this to test out and review a couple of months ago. So I've been putting some real hours into this camera. I will also talk about which camera I prefer and which camera is the easiest to use. This video will be completely transparent. There's no sponsorship included from any of these brands. So I will be giving you the complete truth about these cameras. Now, before you buy an action camera, there is a few factors that plays a huge role when you're looking to get a new camera for the first time or new tech in general. The first is the way that you see other people use these cameras and maybe promoting the cameras like a sponsored video. And the second one is the way that you will be using the camera. And there's also the price. If you can only choose one of these cameras, which will be the best camera for you and which of these cameras will add the most fun when you're out traveling or want to capture some moments with your family. To me, a camera should be more than just high resolution, endless record time and waterproof below 20 meters. It should add something, something that wants me to grab this camera and take it with me everywhere. So these are the things I'll be going through in today's video. And to be honest, I don't favor any of these cameras. They have all their purposes in my life, but I want to share some perspectives and the ways of how you can use these different cameras. And at the end, it will be completely up to you or whether you pick just one or all of the four. So let's start with the quality. The GoPro can record videos as high as 5.3K, which alone is pretty impressive. Though the Insta360 X3 can record up to 5.7K resolution, but this is spread throughout a 360 degree framing and the final export after reframing the 360 footage will look similar to 2.7K when exported in ProRes at 4K resolution in the studio app and even less when exported using the mobile app. The Action 3, on the other hand, is limited to 4K recording, but most of us don't need more than 4K anyway, or even 2.7K. And the Go 3 has a new video mode with 2.7K resolution, along with the previous Pro video mode, which is now renamed to Freeframe. And this is where you have the 1440p at 50fps and features like horizon lock and adjustable aspects. But when you shoot at a high resolution with a higher bitrate, it will also increase the workflow for the average user because the files will be bigger, which also might result in a slower computer performance when editing your videos. And if 
if we look at the difference from 4 to 5.3k, it's not that noticeable when putting them side by side. There is some, of course, but if you watch two different videos on two different days, you will probably not notice the differences at all, and most likely, you won't be thinking about it either. Here we have four shots, one from each camera. If you ask me, all of these shots looks pretty good and there's no parts of these clips which makes me want to click away from the video. The only difference now is that you actually see them side by side or in order so you can better spot the differences. So if you were to watch a video shot on the Action 3 and then go over and watch a video shot on the GoPro and then the Insta360 Go 3, you might not be able to spot the differences and tell which video is shot on what if you watch this on your smartphone. But on paper, the GoPro is the winner because it has that high resolution coming straight out of the camera. And personally, I do think this looks the sharpest. But what I've learned over the years is that when you're looking for a new action camera, don't decide based on the resolution, but rather the versatility and ease of use. As long as the camera shoots 1080p, it will be more than enough for your social media posts. But I will come back to that in a sec. Now, let's talk about battery life. This is one of the most crucial parts when you get an action camera, especially if you're looking for a camera that will last a whole day or a camera to use for motovlogging or a dash cam or something like that. You don't want the camera to die in the middle of some action or overheat because of a hot battery or poor design. There's tons of different battery tests out there, most done in controlled environments and uh, yeah, I said it before, these are all good tests to see how long the camera can record for before the camera overheats or the battery runs out. Now I've been traveling for years and I've never experienced any issues with any of these cameras. I also put the Go 3 to the test since I haven't been using it for as much as the others and compared to the previous Go 2, I could record for 25-ish minutes without any overheating issues where the go-to overheated after just five to seven minutes and also when i'm traveling it doesn't really matter if the camera can record continuously for one or two hours, I never record longer than 10 to 15 minutes anyway, because most of the time I end up using a few minutes tops of the clip that I record. So a continuous record of up to one to two hours will just be a waste of storage for me personally. But from my experience using these four cameras in particular, I can only see an issue with the GoPro Hero 10, like I mentioned earlier. The Action 3 is the clear winner. Then we have the new Go 3 followed by the X3 and the last the GoPro Hero 10. But in reality, it also comes down to resolution, frame rate, and bitrate, and also the settings that you use with the camera when you record. The higher you go, the more likely it is to overheat. And I've also recently experienced even more issues with the GoPro Hero 10, which is the one that I have. And this GoPro Hero 10 also happens to be the most reliable GoPro that I've ever owned, except for the GoPro Hero 5. It seems like the battery is somewhat loose and this could be the cause of all the issues when I'm out riding my bike. And I think for each bump I cross, there's a big chance of the battery actually coming slightly off the pins inside the camera, which is causing this to just suddenly shut off. So that's basically led me to use the Action 3 instead. And now that I have the Go 3, there is a fine balance there of which I should use, but we will come back to that in a sec. But in general, for the daily use, the battery life of these cameras are the same, especially for my use. As long as I can record what I want to record, I'm completely fine with that. So battery, if it lasts forever or lasts for 15 minutes, I don't personally care. But as long as I get what I need, I'm happy. But a tip here is to always bring a power bank. Anchor PowerCore 3 Elite, this is a must have for me. And this is the power bank I have two of now or three. And this comes with me everywhere. It's a little bit heavy, but this can juice any action camera up 10 times at least. So something like this is highly, highly strongly recommended if you have an action camera looking into getting an action camera. 
Now, another thing which seems to split people apart when it comes to these action cameras is also picture profiles. Personally, I like them all equally, and there's no camera I would pick over the other just because it has a different color profile. The GoPro has the natural color profile along with the vibrant color profile and the flat profile, but the natural color profile is the one that I use all the time with this camera. And with the Action 3, I use the like the most to get that 10 bit, and with the X3, I use a Vivid, which gives the best image when applying my signature LUTs, and the Go 3, I've found that the flat profile gives the best overall look after color correcting and grading. The Go 3 also has 10 brand new color profiles, which separates the Go 3 from the other cameras. With the Go 3, you can now find profiles that match your style, whether this is mountain biking, ocean sports, snow, urban or night shooting, the Go 3 has the profiles already built into the device, so you'll spend less time color correcting and grading your footage, which is quite cool. And also, if you like the look of the clips you've seen in this video, I also have a discount on my signature LUTs, which has been used to color grade those, and you can find that down in the description below. Now, let's talk about exporting. Let's say you're out traveling. Most likely, you want to upload some shots right away to Instagram, maybe to YouTube Shorts or TikTok. And the fastest way to do this is to use the mobile app and just connect the camera and edit the clips. So we have three different apps here, the DJI Mimo app, the Insta360 app, and also the GoPro Quick app. In order to get the footage over to one of the apps, you will have to connect the camera to your phone using the app. This is a pretty seamless process, except for the GoPro Quick app. I can honestly say that this is the worst app I've ever used, and it has a lot of flaws. It continuously fails connecting and getting the files over to my phone has always been a pain, unless I use the SD card reader. The DJI Mimo and Insta360 app, on the other hand, is two amazing apps, which both is reliable and easy to use. With these apps, I've never experienced connection failure, and they are both extremely beginner-friendly, which really helps if you're looking to get a new action camera. DJI Mimo is a fantastic app, but the editing process is fairly tedious, and I find the AI editor to be quite limited compared to the Insta360, and it just doesn't give me that wow feeling during or after the edit is done. So it's best used to control the camera settings when mounted to shoot something like a time lapse or a b-roll of yourself when you're out hiking just to make sure that you are in frame and the exposure is good. The Insta360 app, on the other hand, is a more versatile and up-to-date app compared to any other app I've used. And the best part about it is that you have one app which works with all their cameras, regardless of being a 360 camera or a small Go camera or a gimbal. Everything goes through the same app. It's also pretty straightforward to use and it's actually more fun to edit videos compared to the other two apps. And I think Insta360 has put that as a goal by having multiple challenges with rewards as well as rewarding the user with gold coins based on your activity, which you can then use to get discounts on products or accessories. And instead of spending hours on editing, you have most of the features you need with a tap of a button. My favorite is Deep Track, especially when I'm out with my bike. I can just select myself and start tracking. I can also mix it up by having some parts of the video tracking myself and other parts where I adjust the position with keyframes. So a quick upload to Instagram or to add a YouTube Shorts, the Insta360 app will definitely give the best editing experience when using a phone. Now, Insta360 also have their studio app where you can edit your videos in the same way by using tracking, speed changes, and keyframes. But it also allows you to export your footage in ProRes to get the highest quality out of the X3 and the Go 3. And if you want to take your X3 videos to the next level, you can also use the GoPro Reframe add-on for Premiere Pro and After Effects to get a smoother movement and transitions, but this requires a subscription plan for Premiere Pro or or After Effects. Now, which of these cameras are the most versatile and which of these cameras have made me want to shoot more videos? In reality, they are all action cameras in some form, but one shoots 360 videos and one has a quick lock magnetic system for easy swap between horizontal and vertical videos as well as two touch screens. And one was the inventor of the first real action camera or what the people look at as the real first action camera, GoPro, and the last, the Go 3, which has the smallest size and a magnetic quick lock system just like the Action 3 and a touchscreen which can be used both ways. 
The Go 3, GoPro, and Action 3 has the same form and abilities. They record with the lens in front, so you capture what you point at. Pretty simple and straightforward. The Insta360 X3 though has two lenses, one on each side, which can record 360 degrees of video, which you can later reframe in the Insta360 Studio or mobile app. And I think I covered most of this in my last X3 video. I actually made a quite a few of them now. So if you want to learn more about the Insta360 X3, I have three videos I really recommend down in the description below. So make sure to check out those if you want to learn more about this amazing 360 camera. But I can't really talk for everyone. And I keep on saying that because everyone is using these cameras differently for different purposes. But since I'm the most average person and I mainly use these cameras to document the trips with my family, I wanna give you my straight up honest opinion about using these cameras. And to refresh your memory, this video is not sponsored. Now let's just start with the GoPro Hero 10. This is the one that I've used the most because I've also had this longer than any of the other cameras. And after using the GoPro Hero 10 for almost two years now, it holds up pretty well. In form of versatility, like I said before, it's exactly the same as before. It fits in my pocket and I can mount it in the same places as any other camera. So I guess versatility rather comes down to what type of mounts and accessories you use and how you use it and where you mount the camera. As for the camera itself, it's just like the GoPro Hero 9 and probably the Hero 11 as well. The screen is no better or worse than it was when I first picked it up and the footage comes out looking the exact same. The only drawback is that I'm not quite sure whether or not the camera is recording, so I always have to have both of the screens turned on, which also drains additional battery. But in general, I just think it comes down to the GoPros being GoPros. I mean, there's no innovation at all. It's the same old, same old. It doesn't really matter if you have the GoPro Hero 9, 10, or 11, or to be honest, it looks like it depends on your shooting environment and a length. It seems like the newer model you have, the faster it will overheat or the more unreliable it will be. But as of use, it's exactly the same now as it was two years ago and probably 10 years before that. But DJI knows what reliability means. And with the magnetic base of the camera, you can almost mount this anywhere. And if you get a bunch of these magnetic mounts, you can place these on your most used items or accessories like a helmet, your FPV drone, a selfie stick, a longer selfie stick, and so on. You also have the dual touch screen, one on the front and one on the back, both providing the exact same function. And if you're making shorts or Instagram reels, you can use the included cage to just swap it from horizontal to vertical position and then just start recording. Personally, I never shoot vertical videos with the Action 3 because I have other cameras for that, but if you do, you have a much faster and better way of doing so with the Action 3 compared to the GoPro. The Action 3 is also extremely easy to use and the touch screen is so amazing. It feels like swiping on a phone and navigating through the settings is pretty satisfying as well since you don't have that extra lag or glitch before you get to the right section, which you most likely will experience with the GoPro. Yeah, I know there's a lot of roast going on towards GoPro now, but yeah, they, they've had 10 years, 11 years, 12 years to come to fix their issues, but it just seems to get worse. They are so obsessed with having high resolution rather than optimizing the internal components of the camera, which is actually causing a lot of GoPros to overheat and malfunction. So until they fix their issues, I think I'll be staying to the Action 3, the Insta360 Go 3 and the X3. Now, next up is the Insta360 GO 3, which also comes in the same category as the Action 3 and the GoPro. Now, after using this for about two months now, I'm quite happy with the performance. Just like the X3 and the Insta360 mobile app, it has never failed. And being able to use the GO 3 and the Action Pod as two separate devices is just awesome. It is, however, the camera with the lowest resolution at only 2.7K, which is almost half of what the GoPro shoots. But for 
me, like I said, it really comes down to reliability. And with some adjustments here and there, the footage coming from the Go 3 really looks spot on, if you ask me. But prior to the Go 3, we also had the Go 2, which was originally made to be your sidekick, along with an action camera or a DSLR or mirrorless camera because of the low resolution but extreme versatility. It was made for fun. And the Go 3 is no different, actually. It's also made to capture those moments of fun you normally wouldn't be able to capture without having some clunky equipment or run around with the camera in your hand. And with the improved quality of the Go 2 and the 2.2 inch touchscreen, it opens up for a whole new world for the Go series. I mean, I can actually see myself using this as my main action camera. The past month I've had more fun with the Go 3 than I've ever had with the GoPro because of the versatility and how easy it is to mount and use. But of course, I will always bring the Action 3 because the Go 3 and the Action 3 is somewhat the same cameras, but they have two different purposes for my life. So just having those two side by side really makes it more convenient for me when I'm out traveling or shooting videos because one is extremely small and one is more robust and can actually take a pretty heavy hit. Now moving over to the last one, which is the X3. And to me, this is the most versatile camera out of these four. Point and shoot and you capture everything. Don't worry about framing or anything like that because you can deal with that later. And to be honest, I've never had so much fun using a camera. It's a different fun than the Go 3, but for capturing those bird's eye selfie shots or for when I'm out riding my bike, there is no other camera I would choose. I also keep on getting DMs and comments from people thinking and saying, Saying that the reframing process is tedious, but to me, well, I can, it's not. It's just like editing a normal video, but the difference is, is that you actually do the editing in a different software. You do the editing like a normal, regular action camera inside the 360 Studio app, but the difference is, is that you have more freedom. If you want to reframe, you reframe. If you don't want to reframe, you don't reframe. And after you've finished all the editing in the Insta360 Studio app, the only thing you have to do is to export the video in ProRes or H.264, H.265 at 200 megabits per second and uh, then drag it over to your timeline of your editing software and you are done. The only thing left is to add your color correction or grading. But in my opinion, the X3 is a must have camera of these four. Like I said, you capture everything and you can mount it anywhere, just like the Action 3, the Go 3 and the GoPro, but it adds more, but it also depends on what you want. Personally, I prefer the X3, but if you're more into those POV shots or if you'd like to have a regular type of action camera as well or maybe you already have the X3 then my pick would be the Go 3 because of its versatile mounting options and the fact that it barely has any weight to it it's the most convenient camera to bring on a hike or when you have some fun with your kids in the yard and if you just want the standard point of shoot action camera which will never fail and has 4k resolution up to 120 fps for slow motion then I would would opt in for the action three. As for the GoPro lineup, I would or will stay away from the next models until they got everything fixed. Despite giving the best image quality, I need something which is at least 99% reliable and I don't feel like I get that with the GoPro. And this is also the third Hero 10 I bought because the first two had both connection issues and failed to update. But I gave it a last chance before I went to Hawaii. The fact that I had to buy three of the same camera to get a working one is madness. Also the main reason I'm not getting the Hero 11 and maybe not the 12 either. Now as for the Action 3, it's a fantastic camera, but if you have one from the first batch like me, there's still some focus issues which has been better after a sharpening update, but it's still not optimal. Personally, I don't mind because I don't film too close with it, but some people said that the new batch has a complete fix for this and there's also a lot of videos out there giving you a permanent fix. The durability of this camera is on the extreme. I'm not sure how many times I've dropped this now, but there is barely any scratches. And as for shooting longer videos, this wins the cake. No overheating, no record issues, 
nothing. But for me, when I'm out traveling, it just doesn't give me that extra kick when I watch the videos I recorded. It's just a normal, straightforward video which has no adjustments to it other than color grading. And for post-production, there is not much I can do to spice it up either, but it does look good though. Now, the Go 3 adds a bit more versatility on this part with a small size and endless mounting options. And the fact that I can place the camera somewhere and then see what the lens sees without needing to connect my phone to the app is big. It makes everything much easier and more convenient when I want to frame something. I also have a full dedicated video on the Go 3 where I dive deeper into the use of this camera, so I'll leave that down in the description below if you want to check it out. So based on my unbiased review and opinion about these cameras after using them for many months, I still prefer the X3 because of its versatility and the ways I can use it with point and shoot and reframe later. This also makes me enjoy my trips more without thinking about always checking the framing and see if I got the shot or not. But as for the Action 3 and Go 3, they're in the same boat. I would use the Action 3 when I'm doing more challenging activities, which could potentially the destroy the Go 3 and the Go 3 will always be my main choice for hiking and doing activities and traveling with my family because of its size and the ease of use when running after two kids. But as for the GoPro, it's completely up to you. Either you like it or you don't. So I will most likely stick to the Action 3 as my main real robust go-to action camera when doing water sports like surfing, paddleboarding or similar things like that along with the X3 for those endless framing options and of course the Go 3 as my main lightweight uh, hiking camera or when I'm having a good time with the family. I will leave some links down to the different cameras as well as my most used accessories over the years in case you're looking for something to make your shooting more convenient. But regardless of which camera you get, make sure to pick up the 3 meter selfie stick from Insta360. This has been a game changer for the ways that I shoot videos. Not only 360 videos, but normal videos as well, like the Action 3 or the Go 3. So there you have my honest unfiltered comparison with the X3, Go 3, Action 3 and the GoPro. Which of these cameras you decide to pick up is completely up to you. But if I was able to help you in the right direction and help you choose the perfect action camera for you, then let me know down in the comments below. And also if you have any of these cameras, which do you have? And if you are looking to get one, which will you be getting? Let me know down below. There's also links to everything in this video down there as well if you want to check it out and also if you found any value in today's video let me know by dropping a like also subscribe if you haven't done that already so we don't miss out on the next video so with that said thanks for tuning in and i will see you in the next video